These are the bones of the appendicular skeleton. This is the scapula. This is the posterior side of the scapula here. This is the lateral side. This is the acromion process. This is the coracoid process. This is the glenoid fossa that articulates with the head of the humerus. If this articulates with the head of the humerus, it must fit on the lateral side of the body. So this is the lateral border. This is the medial border. If you look on the anterior surface, you can actually see ridges in the bone. And that's because that's where the ribs fit in here. And this is the costal surface. So you have the acromion process, coracoid process, glenoid fossa, lateral border, the medial border, and the costal surface. Okay. This is the clavicle. The clavicle is known as the collarbone. It flattens as it goes out. So this portion right here is flatter than this end. This flattened portion here is going to meet here with the acromion process. So it's called the acromion extremity. While this is going to be called the sternal extremity because it meets up with the sternum. This is the humerus. On the humerus, you have the head that is round here. You have the greater tubercle, and you have a surgical neck here. There is a neck here, but we want to know the surgical neck for your test. This is where if people fall, they usually catch themselves with a lot of force here, and it's going to break easier. So here's the surgical neck. The deltoid is going to come over, and it's going to attach here to this rough area called the deltoid tuberosity. You might be able to see it's on the lateral side of the bone. The head is going to face medial so it, because it's going towards the body. So these are the medial condyles here. These are the lateral condyles. See this deeper fossa here? This is the olecranon fossa, so that's the posterior side of the bone. Let's turn it around. See the head of the, the, head of the humerus again. This is the greater tubercle. This is the deltoid tuberosity, and this region here is called the surgical neck. This is the medial condyle. This is the lateral condyle. And if you look on the posterior side, you see the olecranon fossa. Okay, what fits in the olecranon fossa? This is the ulna, and it's the olecranon process of the ulna. So this right here is the olecranon process. You can see that some people get um, the ulna and the radius mixed up. If you can look at the ulna, and see that it makes a U shape here. This is the olecranon process. If you come down to the wrist region, you have the head of the ulna, and this thinner region here is the neck of the ulna. This little bump here is called the styloid process, and it's very easily seen um, on your own wrist. You can see it on mine here. So that's your styloid process of the ulna. This is the radius. You can easily tell what the radius is because if you look at one end of it, there's a, it's a complete circle. And most people know the relationship between a radius and a circle. So this is the head. You have the thinner area here called the neck. This rough area here is the radial tuberosity. And come all the way down here to the wrist area. And you see this part of the bone here that kind of sticks out. This, this is the styloid process of the radius. Okay. Let's look at our wrist bones and our hand. These smaller bones here of the hand are called the carpals. These are the metacarpals. They make up the palm of the hand. And then you have phalanges. All of these are the phalanges that make up your fingers and the two bones in your thumb. You have um, the proximal, middle, and distal bones of each finger, proximal, middle, and distal. And your fingers are numbered. Number one is the thumb. Number two is your pointing finger. Number three is your middle finger. Number four is your ring finger. Number five is your pinky finger. So this bone right here, this particular bone here, this would be middle phalange number three. Okay, this bone is collectively three bones fused together. You divide it here in the acetabulum into three different bones, like this right here. The superior bone up here is the ilium. This one on the posterior side is the ischium. And this bone here in the front is the pubis bone. The big circle here, this is the socket for your ball and socket joint. That's the acetabulum. Here, if you put your hands on your hips, you put your hands on the iliac crest. This large, rough area here, this is where the sacrum is going to come over 
So it's a kind of a large, stable joint. So this is the sacroiliac joint. My finger right here is in a pretty big notch on the posterior side. That's the greater sciatic notch. Come down and let's look at the bone here on the posterior side. I'm going to turn it over so you can see the actual portion that we're looking at. This rough area here that's large, this is the ischial tuberosity. You see it on the ischial tuberosity. This little portion right here that sticks out is the ischial spine. Turn it around and let's look at the pubis bone. You see this large hole here? This is the obturator foramen. And this portion of the obturator foramen is the inferior ramus. This portion is the superior ramus. Okay, this area here is where you have a joint where the other pubic bone is located. So this is the location of the pubic symphysis. Okay, here we have the pelvic bones put together. You can see that here's your orbitrator for Raymond's, it's the same as they were. This, this joint is called the pubic symphysis. If you look closely, you can see that you have an imaginary plane here. This imaginary plane located here is the pelvic inlet. The imaginary plane located here between your ischial tuberosities and the caustic bone is the pelvic outlet. The area located here above the pelvic inlet is the false pelvis. The area located here in between the pelvic inlet and the pelvic outlet is the true pelvis. So you have the, true pel the false pelvis, you have the pelvic inlet, the true pelvis, and the pelvic outlet. Another thing on this model too, you see that the two pubic bones come together and the angle that in which they come together is called the pubic arch or the pubic angle. Okay, here we have our femur. This large rounded end here is called the head. This is the neck. This bump here on the lateral side is called the greater trochanter. Because the head is always going to be on the medial side, you can go down to the other end of the bone. And you can see that this is the medial condyle, while this is the lateral condyle. Turn it over, and you can see that there is a fossa in between them, and that is called the intercondylar fossa. Okay. Let's look at our tibia. The tibia is the larger bone of the leg. If you look at the ankle end of it first, this would be the distal end. You can see that you have this little knot here. It's not located here. Because your tibia is going to be the medial bone of your leg, then this is your medial malleolus, which makes this side of your bone up here the medial condyle. This side here is the lateral condyle. This rough area on the anterior side is the tibial tuberosity. This is what, if you um, stand on your knees and it's right underneath your kneecap, you can kind of see here that your patella would be located here. It's this area right underneath your kneecap where you would stand on your knees. That's your tibial tuberosity. And then you have this kind of a sharper edge on the anterior side that's called the anterior crest. So you have your medial malleolus, your medial condyle, your lateral condyle, tibial tuberosity, and the anterior crest. Okay. From that one, let's look at our fibula. This is the fibula here. It's hard to tell which end of the fibula is the head and which end is the malleolus unless it's put next to the tibia. So on your test, it will be beside it. This is the head. This here is the lateral malleolus. The lateral malleolus is on the tibia because it is the lateral bone and you're able to feel your lateral malleolus on the lateral side of the ankle joint. Okay, let's look at our foot. Okay, all of these bones here are all tarsal bones. There are two tarsal bones that are larger than the other ones. This is the talus bone here, and this is the calcaneus bone here. The metatarsals are these long bones that make up the arches of the foot, and these are the phalanges in the foot. They're almost, or there's a lot of similarities in the names of the hands and the feet. The big toe is number one, the toe next to it is number two, three, four, and the pinky toe is number five. So the name of this bone here is metatarsal number three. 